Hey, how's it going? We've hey, how is it going? We've been having a lot of conversations lately about gear ratio and how it relates to the car. Um, that said, there's a few other things I want to discuss with gear ratio, but first, let's look at gear ratio and how it impacts the car. We're going to start out with a 1967 GTO with a lot of information. Um, the engine is a single plane 400 with a 294 cam. It's also using milled and CNC ported 6x4 heads. This car is also set up with a spool. I, th I threw in numbers for the stock torque converter, but we're going to use the Hoosier 275s for the test and just throw in numbers for a good track. So I want to talk to you guys about how the relationship of gears, RPM, and horsepower all kind of relate to each other. I'll strap on and hopefully I can teach you guys something really interesting here. This could be a lot of fun. So we're going to begin with the standard 273 gears and the stock 5400 RPM shift point on a TH400. With that being said, we're going to hit the calculate ET. We're going to run a high 13. This is about what I would expect out of this car but I know it has a lot more in it. So let's go ahead and throw on some, but let's make a quick jump to the Pontiac favorite 355. So you will notice that they made a pretty big jump. Um, basically we cut a whole three tenths out of our 60 foot, gained three and a half miles an hour, and went ahead and improved our ET by a whole 0.82. So that's a big change, um, and that's something that you really would feel in these cars. A lot of these mid 70s, uh, 80s, and early 90s cars come with really terrible gears. And a change to 342s or 355s it makes a huge difference in this thing. But let's make one more big jump to 410, because um, that's going to be the other gear ratio I'm sure a lot of guys are looking at. So jumping to 410, we should cut, yep, 0.39, gain 1.89 miles an hour, and cut one point, or, and cut 0.19 off. That is huge. That's crazy. So what that also is going to do, though, is it's going to put your engine really high in the RPM. Um in that third gear. So if your engine's not built for this, do not attempt this. That said, this engine is. So that's why you're going to see those massive climbs there. So with all of that being said, there's something we need to consider here is the point at which the car is shifting. That is the entire thing, is the multiplication of the gears and what it does. So you'll notice that the 410 car, it, which is the blue line, is going to shift sooner. It's already at 5400 RPM, while the 273 is at 2500 RPM. So think about this, the 410 car is able to get into and out of the horsepower faster. So while that car is going to be sitting at the 62 feet line, the 273 car is sitting at 41 and a half feet. The 410 car is boogieing, but it also has to shift sooner. So that gives the 273 car a chance to kind of play catch up, but it's so far gone, it doesn't really matter. So let's just get rid of that thing entirely because it is pretty much useless to us. So with that cl cleaned up, we can really see the two performance gear sets. So the 410 and 355 basically play leapfrog here. But as we zoom out, so if you look here, what this tells me is this car never really got the RPM it wanted. So on a TH400 and TH350, well, and pretty much any non-overdrive transmission, you're going to be running a one gear ratio on the transmission. So basically, you're only doing what the rear end is doing. Now, for this car, I would absolutely suggest a 373, and let's do that really quick, just so you can kind of see, because I know a lot of guys are thinking about that. So what we see here is that 373 gear ratio car is right in the middle of, all, of both of them. And it's actually a more safe place to be. If I was going to actually drive this car on the street, I would absolutely use the 373s over the 410s. Because really, this 410 car should have been out of it. That all being said, the thing I mentioned about RPM and horsepower earlier in the video, let's take a look at what that does. So I know that this engine is... So looking at this graph here, what we're going to see is the engine wants to climb to about 6,000 RPM. So that means we're going to shift it at about 6,200. And mind you, this is currently set to like 5,400. So that's going to be a giant swing. So we're going to keep the 373s because that is the most common aftermarket gear ratio. So now what we're going to see that 373 car at 6200 RPM is really stretching its legs before it decides to shift. So the only change being the 373 gears along with 6200 RPM shift point, let's look at what that does for an average versus the standard 373. So you notice that it's a giant cut off the ET and a big gain on the mile per hour and no real 60 foot change. Now obviously this shouldn't change the 60 foot because the 60 foot should mostly pretty much all be in the first gear. So you're not going to see that change in the shift, but you'll be able to gain mile per hour in every gear. So you're going to see big changes there. Let's look at the chart though. So you actually visualize what I'm talking about. So you're breaking 60 foot at about three quarters of the way through first gear. Um, and then, you know, kind of, you're just stretching it out past that. Mind you, this is the same gear ratio in the rear. It's just a different RPM. So you see it's actually shifting and leaving itself at a higher RPM more in the band 
and able to gain quicker and get back to what it needs to do. But let's throw this against the 410 gear ratio. So you notice the improperly set up 410 is slower than the properly set up 373s. The whole thing with your this entire setup is it needs to be a cohesive unit. This is for people that are running single plane intakes. You want to increase your RPM to where your engine wants to shift. You need to get information on your engine to really know where your shift points are and where they should be. But this 410 can gain a lot also by increasing the RPM, so let's do that. And again, it's a repeat of the same thing. The 410 car is just going to shift sooner, but it's going to draw itself out. But we're going to keep it really, really safe with having a 6200 6, RPM shift point that's really going to help the entire cohesive package of the engine come together. There are a lot of other little things you do as well, like different runner lengths, torque converter stalls, um, tire size impacts this. There's a lot of little things you can do to impact how your car rolls off the line and how it acts later down the track. If you guys learned anything, comment down below and let me know because I'm just kind of curious what you guys are taking away from all these. Again, if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe because we're doing this stuff every week. Have a good one, and I will see you on the road.